Hi everyone, in this video we'll take a really brief look at the Android manifest file. To start, every single Android project contains a manifest file in its root directory. Android manifest files are created using basic, basic XML, uh, and if you're going to actually get into the XML code and you don't know it, it's a good idea to read a primer before getting started. XML is pretty strict, uh, and if you mess up a single character, your your application won't work correctly. Okay, so let's get started. Here's a basic Android project called Hello Android 3, and you see in the root directory we have a file called androidmanifest.xml. So if I double click on androidmanifest.xml, you'll notice it doesn't open up XML code, right? It actually opens up the Android manifest file in a special editor uh, in our Android development environment. Notice along the bottom of the uh, main uh, window here, we have a manifest tab, application, permissions, and instrumentation. And then also we can click to see the XML uh, in Android manifest.xml. So let's talk about what each of the tabs contains. So first, the manifest tab. This, this is information about the project as a whole. So this is really package, uh, package name, version information, minimum SDK, stuff that we would find on the uh, create new project dialog. Be careful with version name because you can really name it anything you want, but just note that when users go to install your app, they will see this version name. Okay, next is the application tab. The application tab is where we provide application-wide settings. So these are things like the application name, uh, the icon that you see on the phone. So you would tap the icon. Um, this is where we specify which image uh, becomes that icon. This is also where we specify activities and intents. So remember that each screen is an activity. Um, each action that our application takes is an activity. When we actually create a new activity and add it to our project, we do need to come to the Android manifest file and actually add the activity to the Android manifest file. So real, real basic is here's the label and the icon. This is what shows up on the phone that the user will tap to open the application. Notice there's a couple ways we can do it. We can just enter the name here. That's perfectly acceptable. Or we can uh, use a string resource. So here we can see we have resources, values, and there's a string called app name. If we change this, it'll actually actually change the name of the application on our phone. Okay. Finally, we have the permissions tab. This tab allows us to enter custom security settings. Note that these are our security settings that indicate what the application itself is able to do. It's not determining what end users can do within the application. It's more about what the application can do. For instance, uh, we can set a permission uh, that, that tells us whether or not the user can make a call from within the application without using the normal dialer interface. So there are uh, several permissions. I'm not going to try to go through all of them. Uh, but you can go to the Android documentation and see a, a big list of all the permissions, things that you're allowed to set within this permissions uh, settings file. And uh, it has pretty decent description, so you can pretty much figure out uh, from the documentation what, what it means. OK, finally, I just want to take a look at the XML file. The, the, I guess the instrumentation, instrumentation tab, this is for uh, when it comes time to test, we can add uh, testing in instrumentation to help us test the application. We'll talk about that uh, later. And finally, just take a look at the, the basic construct of the Android manifest.xml file. So note that we have a root node called manifest. So we have an open and close manifest tag that surrounds all of our settings here. And then we have an application element, and this contains all of our uh, application settings. So here you can see our main activity, which was created with the uh, application when we created it. And within the manifest element, or the open manifest tag, 
we can see some of the settings that we use to create this project. So here you can see our package name. You can see a version code and a version name. And if we did want to change something like the package, we would have to make sure that we update the Android manifest file to reflect the new package. And finally, here's a, an element that's very important, uses SDK. This indicates what the minimum SDK version is. So if a user tries to install the app on a phone that's using SDK 7, it's not going to work because we've set minimum SDK version of 8. So that's it, just a basic overview of the Android manifest file. Very important because it contains settings for our entire application. Thanks.